Hey guys, welcome back to the Bay Room Podcast. Today I'm joined with another special guest. Today I'm joined with, you may know him as Blinky or Jerry Clifford. So Jerry, would you like to introduce yourself to the viewers and listeners? Yeah, uh, thank you for that uh, introduction. Yeah, you may know me as, as Blinky. Um, so my name is Jerry Clifford. Um, Blinky refers to the fact that I'm a, a visually impaired runner. I've competed in two Paralympic Games. I'm 22 from Melbourne, run for Diamond Valley Athletic Club. And yeah, I've just recently got back from Tokyo where I was in the bronze. It's good. It's good. Uh, congrats on the 5 cast, so even that Victorian State Champs on the live stream. <laughs> yeah, no, th- thank you. It was, uh, I uh, think I threw myself in the deep end pretty early after having a break after Tokyo, but it was good to be back racing uh, uh, some of the guys in Melbourne. Um, I've been away for, for about a year. So, yeah, it's good to be back at Lakeside. It's good. I mean, Lakeside was just getting rebuilt, the track and everything. So, I mean, it was pretty much yeah. brand new when the 5K was on. So, that's good. So, um, how was it representing Australia for the second time at the Paralympics? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a really good experience. Uh, when I went to Rio uh, in 2016, I was 17 years of age. So, you know, for me, that experience was all about being a sponge, learning as much as I can, gaining as much experience. Running in front of a big crowd in Rio was uh, a pretty daunting thing to do. Like, it's pretty weird in our sport to run in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people. So that was a, a crazy experience that I thought would come in handy in Tokyo. Uh, turned out it didn't. We ran in front of absolutely no one but yeah the games in tokyo were awesome because this was the first time uh at, you know i was going to a paralympic games the pinnacle of the sport with expectations to perform at a certain level uh, yeah. i was expected from my own you know beliefs in what i was capable of and also from external um pr- pressure i guess was that i was aiming for the gold medal yeah. Uh, so it was a really good experience. I was super grateful that we got over there uh, with COVID and all of that. But yeah, like uh, to come home with two silvers and a bronze is something I never expected. I never expected three medals, but definitely the goal was to win a gold medal. So I did fall short of that. So um, there was a little bit of disappointment, but I also realized that in the conditions, in the heat, uh, I did manage to get the best performances out of myself that I possibly could have on those days considering yeah. all factors but i'm also really proud of those performances yeah i mean i saw you are now ambassador for the guide dogs of australia which is a great achievement for you as you are now allowed to show your message to people and how dogs help people like yourself and yeah it's just really good what they're doing and stuff and i'm happy that you're a part of that now so i mean it's yeah. just thank good. you um, looking back at the Olympics, right, you were in the 1500, you ran well there. I saw you in the marathon after you were vomiting after, which wasn't great. Yeah. It, was, it was the 5k, wasn't it? The third one. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah. 5,000 meters was actually the first race I did. So, um, and it's a weird one because I'm, I'm the visually impaired world record holder in the 1500 meters in the marathon, but the event that I was most focusing on uh, and the one that was probably my best chance of winning a gold medal was the 5,000 metres, which I did. So, and, and it was lucky that that was first, but uh, it was 43 degrees inside the stadium that day um, and like 80% humidity or something like that. So it was absolutely brutal. Uh, just happened to happen on that day. Um, so that was a tough race. Um, I did think I, I could have won maybe on a different day, but, also the fact that you know the, the the olympics or the paralympics they're special because you have to get it right on yeah. the day it doesn't matter if you could be the best the next week because it's it's over like that yeah you got to be right broken my body was pretty destroyed after that uh, effort um i spent a lot of time throwing up after that race as well i, I got stretching underneath the stadium and I was uh, laying in an ice bath, like hanging out of the ice bath, leaning into a shower cubicle, throwing up uh, before I even did my interview with the media. So, you know, that was a, a big race to, to have like that. And then the 1500 metres, the 1500 metres, you know, it was hard to back up two days yeah. later after such an effort. Um, 
I managed to run a 53 second last lap. Uh, That's impressive. Just, yeah. uh, not enough for goal. So I was pretty happy with the last lap. And then the marathon was just a crazy, you know, bonus thing to do. <laughs> I mean, I saw on one of your posts, you had a Nike and uh, spray painted on the wall. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, that's another thing, I guess, with the whole Tokyo campaign. I was super lucky that Nike got on board. Uh, they've been incredible supporters of myself and also incredible supporters of the Paralympic movement, I've found. And they uh, decided that I should be a part of the uh, hashtag Play New campaign. They said there was an ad running on TV. There was, um, yeah, like a few things on billboards. And then they did the mural in the city um, near Melbourne Central. So, Pretty surreal, uh, pretty pretty epic that Nike were getting behind me so much. But it, yeah, it means the world to have that much support and exposure. And I think it's good for not just Paralympic sport, but also good for the running community that you know Nike are getting behind runners like myself and you know people like Stewie McSwain as well. Yeah, I mean I've seen you've been uh, training with a group, great group of people, which has been very supportive for you, like Tim Logan, who ended up running with you in the marathon he would have been excited for you as you won that medal. As I saw a photo, he was on the podium with you a couple of months. That would have been a major, like, like enjoyment for both of you and your coach. So how was that getting on the podium with him? Yeah, no, it's, it's super special. So with my disability, with my impairment, I can, in a lot of uh, contexts, run on my own. Yeah. Uh, as I've gotten quicker or as I've run, I guess, further distances, the fatigue that is associated that goes to the uh, my vision means that if I am running solo, sometimes I have to uh, use a lot of my energy not on the running and yeah. just on being able to get around, which can be yeah. wasteful. So uh, in certain situations, particularly off the track, I'll use a guide. Um, and then in training, they may not have a tether because that's a it's more a rule requirement in training they'll just be with me on a bike running chatting to me telling me what's going on so i can basically you know they're my eyes then their message to me is is like the connection to the brain and then i'm still the one making the tactical decisions so it's a really special connection to have with someone i've been running with timmy for like like almost a decade um which is pretty crazy and um so to have him there in that last half of the marathon of when I was in a pretty bad way, I was probably throwing up the last 12 kilometers of that race, um, mainly because, you know, I wasn't, my body wasn't ready to do a marathon. I hadn't trained for it properly. So to have him there, super special to get him up on the podium as well. That was super, super cool. Um, and to just know that um, someone's got my back, like the way he has had my back for so long. Yeah. It's a, it's a super cool thing. I looked at one of your posts, one of your older ones, right? It was a running and you had the Paralympics and stuff. You haven't ticked off the uh, marathon or the gold medal yet. <laughs> so there's some goals. No, I, I've, I've, I have finally ticked off the marathon <laughs> one. So I've just got that one more to go. Yeah. I mean, looking at your world champs, like that would have been like, that would have been one of your first big medals you would have won. And you had your coach and everything there. How was that? leading like that world champs compared to the olympics how is that crowd difference and stuff yeah like world world champs i mean for me the experience of i won two gold medals um for those that don't know and um the 1500 meters i only won by 0.1 of a second and the guy that i had beaten uh had actually let out the race so like although i did win the gold medal i think i i mainly won out of tactical decision making rather than being a genuinely better athlete uh in terms of fitness so when he beat me in, in tokyo i wasn't totally shocked by it i definitely knew he was capable of doing it um but yeah i think going you know from those two gold medals there uh you know at the time it was only eight months until tokyo so i definitely thought i'd be able to replicate at least one of them yeah. um but then covid meant that everyone all my competitors had another year to train i yeah. too but I also knew at that, that at 2020, I would have been in similar shapes. So um, the experience was different. Like, and I think the Paralympic game, the, the other thing with Paralympic sport is that the Paralympic games are a step above, a level above uh, our world championships. So um, people just perform better for, uh, for some reason. So uh, yeah, the experiences were totally different, but in terms of like crowds, um, yeah, there was, there was probably more people at a world championships in Dubai 
um, which, to be honest, didn't have that many people either. Uh, yeah. And in Tokyo, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, in COVID, how was training during COVID? Because I know for me personally, it was a little bit hard to get motivation. But, like, how was motivation for you during COVID? Like, I know you have a girlfriend and everything. Did she help you in some way? While yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah. I mean, my experience with COVID, I guess, was that I was here in 2020 in Melbourne. I uh, was in the stage for the big lockdown in 2020 for probably a month. Yep. And then because my coach is based in Canberra uh, and then the, the rules saying it, it was very hard for me to get assistance running when I needed to. So yep. I decided to go to Canberra and base myself there. Uh, and then because of the uncertainty with Melbourne, I decided to base there for the next 12 months. Um, yep. But it was a really tough time because when I decided to go to Canberra, I didn't know whether I'd be able to visit Melbourne in the next 12 months because no one knew what was happening at the time. And um, yeah. my girlfriend has obligations here in Melbourne with work and stuff. So yeah. she didn't, didn't come. Uh, and that was tough. Like that was a pretty scary thing, but she was super supportive of me. Um, you know, we got through it. We're still, <laughs> we're still together. Um, and which is super good, but yeah, she was such a big support. And I know um, I couldn't have got through the last 12 12 months without her but also like without my family and then the people in Canberra they kind of took us under their wing uh, and when I say us Tim and I both went so they yeah. took us under their wings and um made sure we were welcome in, in Canberra and yeah training honestly wasn't too disrupted because I was lucky enough to get to Canberra so I guess I yeah like I'm definitely lucky yeah that's good but like for me personally like we weren't allowed to train so I'm in Melbourne as well and it was so much harder to, like, because I live nowhere near where my training groups are and it was, like, harder to train because I had no one to train with. So that was a bit hard plus motivation because, like, there was nothing really to look towards in 2020 especially. 2021 was a little bit different because you had the borders and stuff open. You could still train with groups and stuff. But we had a little COVID break in 2021. We you wouldn't have been in Melbourne when they had the little lockdown situation but that again we weren't allowed to travel outside of 10ks so that was another like little bit of difficulty for me to train with other people but you know we got through it so also i know you're a big afl fan because i know when you were young you said you wanted to play afl like if you didn't have vision like going away would you have chosen to do afl over running considering how much success you've done in running yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, and you know, when I like, there's no way. Well, at least I'm not I'm not going to pretend that I ever would have um, been able to make it into the AFL. But it was definitely my like my, my passion. Um, you know, but I had my passion was for sport, and I think that was just the natural sport to be super passionate about in Melbourne, and yeah. um, still am. Like, I absolutely love going to the footy and the atmosphere there, and stuff like that and I think that's with my visual impairment like as a kid I struggled a lot with um kind of owning who I was embracing these cards that have been dealt and you know I used to rebel against adaptive technology for instance which is something that would help me because it, and I rebelled against that because it would then expose the fact that I was different and I didn't want to be different yeah and you know I just wanted you know to fit in and, and no one would know but, but uh what I've actually realized through the Paralympic movement, through my personal experiences is that when I, when I started to run, I actually gained a lot of self-esteem confidence in myself and, and through meeting so many incredible people, I actually realized that my very small minor diversity is a unique thing is actually a really you know, it's a thing to be celebrated just like any type of diversity. Like to be different is actually super awesome. Like there's yeah. no, like that is why society is so such a cool thing to be a part of because there's so many yeah. different people. So I realized that. So the way I now look at it in terms of like what have I chosen, like maybe I would have, but maybe that would have been a mistake because I nearly think that the blessing of having my, um, you know, degenerative eye condition is that I found running. Maybe I would never have found running if I hadn't, you know, had this thing happen in my life. So um, I, I kind of look at it like that because I genuinely think that, you know, running is probably the sport I would have been best at e either way. So um, it, maybe it's actually guided me to this. So it's a really interesting question. Um, but yeah, I might've chosen footy, but that doesn't mean it would have been the right choice. So 
I mean, you've made such a big impact in Paralympics in Australia, especially, and I think in, outside of the world as well, because like you've done so well in the Paralympics and you've proven that nothing, anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. And like that to me is such a great big motivation like stage for people that, like yourself and other people watching and listening and look up to you. Like I reckon that's such a big like achievement to have, like have people look up to you knowing what you've done in the sport of athletics especially, like I reckon that's such a big achievement for yourself to accomplish, not just with running, like you've done well in running, don't get me wrong, like you're one of the best runners in the world for Paralympics, but like outside of Paralympics, like I reckon you've made such a big impact on people's lives, that's me personally, but like I reckon that. Thank you very much. Yeah, that that genuinely means a lot because I think for me, if I can do anything, it's that to show uh that there should never be this kind of like divide ever between olympics and paralympics in fact you know as a kid i had you know heroes that were at the olympic games and i had heroes that were at the paralympic games and i think it's crazy now to realize that there are actually people in our sport that are looking up to paralympians even though they may not have a disability and that's the way it should be it's like it's very similar to um you know a a a a junior girl can have heroes that are men or women yeah. like you can just have heroes that are runners and i think that's super cool and i think um I, i'm really proud that perhaps I'm, I'm playing a part in that and yeah and to hear what you just said too that that means a lot so thank you that's right so like looking back at afl right what team do you support <laughs> so i'm a carlton supporter so i haven't had much success in my time <laughs> But uh, fingers crossed. Who do you go for? Richmond. <laughs> oh, mate, you've had two, you've had two, you've had your times. No, nah, you've had too many premierships. <laughs> Maybe you should tell that to Jordan Williams. He's a massive Richmond fan. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, there's too. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, you guys have won too many in the last few years. It's, I'm, uh, yeah. Look, I don't know. Melbourne might be tough to beat in the next couple of seasons. They look pretty, pretty damn good. I think Carlton have picked up a few good players. Hopefully they will do better this year. Do you reckon they'll do better this year? Yeah. I reckon, I reckon. But I've been saying that since I was about 10. So, like, I think this time it could be true. Like, But also I've been wrong multiple times. So, I, I, honestly, my hopes, I try not to get them too high now. Um, but it'll still happen. I'll still be, like, pumped for round one. I'm just glad. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think we have to play Richmond round one or I don't know if that's changed yet, but I know we always lose round one because of you guys. <laughs> Back when you were younger, what was your greatest memory of uh, Carlton playing? Whoa, greatest memory of the Blues. I think, you know, I, I was uh, five or six, I think, when um, Dad took me to Princess Park to watch the last game at that ground, like the last AFL game. Yeah. Um, and I remember that. I don't remember much of the game. I just remember being there and it being like a big deal. Um, yeah. So that was probably my, my, my favourite moment. Um, I guess, you know, and just because just you're a Richmond supporter, I'll bring up the, the 2013 elimination final. I think Carlton had finished ninth and got in because of Essendon and then come from behind, win against the Tigers. <laughs> didn't, didn't end up giving us any, uh, any uh, premierships or anything like that, like you guys now have, but it was a good good game. I mean, will you be going to any AFL games next season? Yeah, for sure. I reckon I'll uh, suck suck myself into um buying a membership, so I'll be there. I can't really like when I'm there. I'm I'm usually more listening to the radio to get my uh, content, but I just love the atmosphere. Being in the crowd like that's huge, and um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just it's a, it's a good feeling to be there. Yeah, but outside of the AFL, what other sports do you enjoy? Like listening to and watching. What other sports do I follow? Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a cricket fan. Uh, I'm watching the Ashes at the moment. That's been, been uh, something I've been following the last, last few days. It's pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. That it's all underway and the Aussies. That's probably oh, and, and the and the soccer as well. I'm yeah. a, I'm a Melbourne Victory member as well. I just like live sport. I like the atmosphere. I like yeah. the noise. Um. So, yeah, no, I'm a big sports fan. 
good. I mean, I'm a massive sports fan. I like all sports. Like, it's just interesting to see how different sports bring people together. I think it's just so cool. Like, soccer, you have the whole world behind you. And, like, AFL, you have all Australia behind you. Running, you have literally the whole globe and stuff. It's just amazing what different sports, like, do to people. It's just, yeah, the atmosphere, like you said, it's amazing. Like, especially in the soccer, I don't know if the soccer in Australia is as big as what it is in the Europe, but I know AFL, I reckon the AFL crowds in Australia are a lot bigger than the soccer crowds in Australia, personally. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah, they definitely are. I think, uh, I think you'll get, oh, I don't know, maximum crowd would be about like 30, and that wouldn't happen very often. So I reckon the average would be about 10, but they can get pretty rowdy. Um, bit of singing and stuff like that it's pretty cool to be a part of but yeah as you said like sport is super it can be super powerful like it, it can um it can do some pretty incredible things for the world and you know for me like sport is at its best when it can give people like inspiration or, or motivation or hope um you know if we can if sport can serve as an example uh, in a good way for how society should operate just generally like i know the paralympics have uh, as a movement of, have done incredible things so like like what you were saying yeah sport is just it has a, it's a very powerful thing that if, if used properly and well um can do some really good things for people it's good i was talking to one of my mates on um wednesday and he was he was admiring your shoes that you wore on our tuesday he was like jared clifford wore some very nice shoes wish they were selling them out yeah, yet yeah. oh the the colorway yeah no um, my, uh, uh they're like a, a greeny type type color the mel mara colorway so they're pretty uh yeah they, they um look they didn't get they didn't get me to a good time like a pb or anything like that but they um they do look good yeah i mean i only just got the new pair like the tokyo pair and they're like the colorways are so cool like the original ones like you have the orange pair and the white pair and they have the olympic colorway and your colorway you just came out with like it's just cool how now I can just switch up the colors and like, like other companies are doing, they're trying to be like Nike, so they're trying to make the same shoes. Like what's your outtake, like our input on what other shoe companies are doing? Cause I know you're under Nike and you can't really say much about other companies, but like, what do you think about Nike, especially with their shoes and how they're helping people run faster? Yeah, I think Nike have done some, you know, like really, really, incredible things like technologically to to improve the shoes uh obviously you know we've all worn them i'm sure from the the road shoes to the the new track spikes and and they just uh, they definitely changed the game like i think uh i think the argument is valid in in that they improve our performances uh even if it's just subtle but they definitely they definitely must because like they feel very good like when you're running and I'm sure, I'm sure I think some of the other brands might be catching up. I haven't worn their shoes, but um, I think, I think it's good. Like I think people are able to train now without fearing injury as well. I think even, even beyond the racing shoes um, with, with just jogging shoes, um, I think they're changing the way people are able to train and, and even giving people a second chance in their career um, whereby where if these shoes didn't exist, they may not be able to. So I don't know. I think it's a really positive thing. I, I think it's probably a good thing that there are now parameters in place that you can't like keep making the stack height super, super, super high. Yeah. But, um, now that that's in place, like it's, it's pretty cool that, that the shoes have, um, I don't know. I feel like it's just generated some really positive results uh, and, and some really positive, attention for the sport um even obviously the debates have raged within the sport but yeah. external exposure to the sport i think has been really really good yeah well looking at like outside of running and stuff like we're talking about sport we talked a little briefly about your family how's how's your family going and stuff without co like during covid and now they're out of covid are you still based in melbourne like i know you had the 5k on tuesday you're going to be staying in melbourne for the rest of the year we're going to be traveling to Canberra run with your coach. Yeah, so I've decided to stick around in Melbourne. Um, I love it a lot. Like it's a great city. Um, where I'm from is like Eltham, Diamond Valley area, and we're right next. I'm like a K from the Yarra River, uh, so it's awesome for running and 
yeah, it's just good to be home actually after the last year of uncertainty. So yeah, I'm sticking around here. Um, my girlfriend, so that's nice. And then, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I just like running around here and I, but I'll definitely still go back to Canberra for training camps. I'll definitely still, um, you know, I, I chat to him most days either by text or phone or email and, um, we have a pretty good working relationship. So it's basically I'm back to the same training environment that I was in before COVID, yeah. um, which is training via correspondence um, uh, through Phyllis Saunders, who's based in Canberra, but whilst I'm based in Melbourne. Yeah. That's good. So uh, I know this isn't like purely small. How, what are your thoughts on her going to Oregon? Because I know they've brought in some big athletes and I know she's a part of your group. How is that knowing that one of your a girl, especially in your group, is now going to America to race. Yeah, no, it's super exciting. I'm super stoked for Keely. She's, uh, you know, I don't know many people that have worked as hard as she's worked uh, over the like, many years now. So, oh, it's an absolutely incredible opportunity. She's been through some pretty tough times with injury um, and just and just battling with that. But, like, if anyone's going to get through it and if anyone's going to, take an opportunity like this and, and grab it with both hands and absolutely smash it like oh, it would be it would definitely be her so um it's super exciting as well to have an aussie running for oregon um again, like again like with charlie obviously there as well um so yeah no i'm super pumped i'm keen i'm gonna have to get my flow track subscription sorted i think if, if she's gonna be nice on there no yeah but it's super exciting the squad's pumped for her uh philo's pumped for her so it's good. Yeah. Watch, watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> we got Charlie London now. So he's now under Nike as well. He signed a contract yesterday, I think, with Nike, as well as his other teammates, Cooper Tier and Cole Harker. So that's going to be interesting. They're on the Nike now, Jared. They're all joining you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's uh, it's building. It's good. No, it's uh, it's exciting. And, um, you know, obviously, Keely's had that relationship too. So, yeah, it, it, it's really cool. Um, some of the athletes of Nike are, are supporting for sure. Hmm. Or like, well, I remember one of your races when you broke the world record the first time for the fifteen hundred. That was a box hill. How was that running the three forty one? Yeah, that was a pretty insane race. Uh, I kind of knew, I kind of knew uh, in that season that I was probably um, fit enough to, to absolutely smash my PB. Um, just as you'd probably know, sometimes it, it, it kind of you got to get in the right race. So finally I did. Um, but yeah, awesome feeling. Um, one of those races where everything kind of just clicks and, and you know, from, from the gun going to crossing the finish line, you almost don't think at all. And it just happens without, you know, almost with instinct only. So yeah, no, nah, such a good feeling. Um, I'm pretty happy to have a, a PB like that now next to my name. Um, you know, I, I love the 1500 meters. I'm sure I'll do plenty more, but I've also got, uh, you know, dreams in the, in the 5k and the marathon too. So um, I, I, I'm happy, you know, I'm sure hopefully I'll be able to beat that time one day, but I can definitely say, you know, if I, if I did never run quicker, I, I'd be, you know, pretty happy with that time. Yeah. I mean, also about Nike and you personally, what is your favorite kit you've run in from Nike? Cause I know you've had a few kits. What would be your favorite colorway or nicest kit you've run in comfy wise? I think I've probably only had the last two. So the one now and the uh, the kind of the one that was split down the middle with the checkered on one side and the blue on the, well, not checkered, but, you know, greeny blue one. And um, oh, I, I like the one now. I know it's been um, debated as well, but no, I definitely like the one now. I'm excited to see uh, the new one for 2022, I think. So, yeah. We'll have to see when that one comes out, see if it tops this year. But uh, it's been a while since we got a new kit, so I'm excited. I mean, you got the new shoes. It'll probably be the next thing that will come your way, the kit. Yeah, I, uh, they actually did send me some shoes with, like, my initials on them and um, in a box with my, uh, my my results from Tokyo engraved kind of in the box. And, um, yeah, no, they, they treat me pretty well. So it's... um. It's exciting to see whatever come, you know, when the posty knocks on the door, it's always exciting to see what they're bringing me from Nike. Uh, always some new shoes, 
some new casual shoes as well. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh, yeah. We'll see what's next. Yeah, I mean, talking about your glasses and the other glasses you race in, do you have only one pair, or do you have multiple of them? I only have one pair, uh, but in 2019, before the World Championships, a week out, we were doing a pre-camp in Barcelona, but, and they were um, our car was broken into oh. and my bag with you know phone and wallet and everything was stolen but also our aussie race kit and spikes and my racing goggles so um that was a bust up because then i had to run one of my world champs race without them which isn't the end of the world like it's not actually like a major major thing it's more just what i feel comfortable wearing but uh i don't have a spare which has backfired before <laughs> um but there's a, a place in wa that that uh, makes them for me um, or makes them for everyone, but makes them for me and they shipped them over in time for the second race. So they were pretty good. So yeah. um, basically, like, to Sorry. explain like my, no, 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 all good. Like to explain my goggles um, as well for people that don't know. So my eye condition is juvenile macular degeneration, which affects my central vision. Um, basically, I struggle to see facial features or perception of detail in the center of my eye or center of my vision. And um, but I can still see like movement and stuff like that. And my peripheral vision is, I guess, what my strength would be. So, um, but then I'm also severely long-sighted. Um, like the prescription uh, amount is in the double figures. So that's why I wear glasses. But because of my condition, my glasses don't actually correct like the main condition. So, um, but I've worn them since I was super young. So it's pretty much what I'm just comfortable wearing. So, but anyway, and that's like the explanation around the goggles and why I kind of like to wear them. Yeah. I mean, I know you've got normal glasses on now. Why don't you race in there? Is it just because it's a bit like it would move a lot or is it just because the goggles that you race in uh, have to strap and it's easier to run with? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I train in my glasses. It's not that bad. I just, I kind of just have always, because I've always raced in them, feels weird when I don't. And I think the goggles, like it sounds weird maybe, but when I put them on, like I know it's it's race time. Like I know it's different. Um, and it kind of just helps me get in the zone that's necessary or, or is better to be in when racing. So there's no real functional benefit probably to wearing them other than maybe a psychological um uh, what are they called? Like those things you got to do before a race sometimes. Um, oh, just had an absolute mental blank on that word. But yeah, I think I just kind of need to um, I feel like I need to to wear them in a race. And then, like, what, like, what's your go-to meal before a race? Or do you what, like, what is a food you eat regular before a race? Oh, I think the the staples, pasta, um, nothing crazy. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably just have to say pasta. Pretty boring answer, to be honest. Or a lasagna. I know um, mum mum's made a pretty epic lasagna pre-race before that's uh, and I've run well. So, um, yeah, I reckon a mixture of those two. Yeah, I can agree with that. I usually eat pasta before I race the night before. It's a great way. I just had it. I've just been doing it since I was young. And, like, it's just, like, you have that. You, like, you have to have it. It's just, like. Yeah. Yeah, but, no, that's it. Yeah. Like for cricket, how has that been? Like, because I know Australia's been doing really well in the Ashes this year. How have you been uh, listening to it? Yeah, so, <laughs> um, you know, I was a massive cricket fan as much as I was a footy fan as a kid, but I, uh, I uh, realised pretty quickly that I probably wasn't going to play for Australia if I couldn't see the ball. I, I, I realised that would be a, a pretty difficult thing to pull off. Um, so, yeah, but obviously, yeah, still still love it. I think I like test cricket because um, it's, got, it's got that endurance, like, element to it. Um, like, it's a bit of a slog. It's pretty attrition. Like, it's a, there's a lot of attrition involved. So, um but yeah australia's obviously dominating if you don't know um this is i'm speaking on day three so if this uh goes to air and what i'm saying totally backfires um well it doesn't make sense that's why i'm saying it but yeah no nah, it's looking good first first match though so early days yeah 
That's exactly right. I'm looking at the soccer, what team like Melbourne have they been playing yet? Melbourne? I don't really keep up with the soccer, so I don't really know much about it. Yeah. No, I don't play. I don't play. I can see, you know, it's not a super big sport in Melbourne. But no, I've been. Uh, I've gone to a few games where Melbourne Victory is the team I kind of go for. Um, although, I don't, to be honest, I'm not so well versed in in who's who in comparison to footy. But yeah. I think we're yeah we're like top top four, top four, top three on the ladder. So that's not bad. Um, the team I go for in England's Crystal Palace. So we're uh, pretty. Uh, it's pretty standard for us to be in the middle of the table. So. Yeah, no, nah, it's uh, my sporting teams are usually miss more than hit, uh, to be honest. That's right. Also, right, like looking at like podcasts, you know, Dane Burway, he came up with you. He's um, he's my physio. He's a such a good bloke. How is he going up with uh, the Paralympics? Was he the physio for you and helped you as much as what he's helped other athletes in Melbourne? Because I know that's where he's based. He's just had a kid. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, no, I cannot, um, I can't speak any higher of almost anyone than, than a, a, of Dane. Like he is genuinely a guy that has probably changed my perspective on many things to do with my body, uh, physically, to do with running, even just um, how I, he, you know, like he's the guy that was there every day alongside Philo, my coach, um, my train, my teammates. He was there every day leading into the biggest moment of my life in Tokyo. So, you know, I think we've built like a pretty strong relationship, you know, physio athlete on those trips and teams. He's come overseas to flag stuff on training camps and stuff like that. And um, honestly, like he's someone that I really do value being able to speak to like half an hour before the biggest moment of my life. Um, like I, I really cherished that he was there and able to do that. And he'll, you know, if, if he listens to this and he's hearing me say that, I know he'd be like laughing or something and probably going, oh, nah, Cliffy, that's, you know, it's all you or something, you know, something humble like that because that's the way he is. But he's just such a good guy and I, um, I'd um, i really recommend him uh, in – in any capacity from physio to coach to, um, you know, he's someone that's just very passionate and, and uh, about the sport and about, um, you know, making sure people are healthy enough to, to, to enjoy the benefits of running. So he's a, I've rambled on there because he's such a good, good person. That's right. He speaks highly of you. When I, when I told him that I was going to do a podcast with Jared, he's like, you better get him on. He's such a good bloke. <laughs> <laughs> He also was like, he's going to be, yeah, he's, he was like, he's going to be famous one day because uh, after you ran the marathon when you were supposed to be facing, you ended up running the full marathon. He's like, yeah, he's a legend right there. He's going to run so well at the Paralympics. He was, yeah. I, yeah, when I last asked for him, I was talking and talked to him about you and, yeah, because I asked him, like, I wanted to get Jared on a while ago. I wanted to get you on a while ago. But I couldn't get in touch with you because you were racing and I didn't want to interfere with everything. So I didn't really want to bother you with messaging and stuff. So I didn't. So then I, when you uh, replied to me, I messaged Dane. It's like, Bailey, don't mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you've, you've, uh, you've nailed it, I reckon. This has been, um, yeah, one of the more enjoyable interviews I've had. So no, you, it's it's good. I'm a, I'm a, I saw I looked through some of the guests you've had on here too. So I'm a, I'm among some pretty good some pretty good runners. So I'm a, I'm pretty stoked that you are you've had me on today. That's right, mate. Um, that's all I have for you. I don't really know what else to ask you without blabbing on about everything. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and having a chat with me and everything. So hope you enjoyed the podcast and stuff. Yeah, no, no worries at all. Thanks for having me, and uh, good luck with your own running as well. I've uh, I've uh, started following since you got in contact with me, so thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks, guys, for listening. If you guys haven't already, follow Joe Clifford on his adventures in running. Like he's such a good bloke. You guys should go and follow him and follow his journey and help him, as well as what he's helped other people with the Paralympics and stuff. And yeah, uh, thanks, guys, for listening. And yeah, see you guys in the next one. Thanks, Joe, for joining us. No worries, thank you.